Hello friends, welcome back to Desi Plaza with your host Kushbu Rawley. We are uh, in talks with Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. So Mr. Reddy, as you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that uh, you, uh, you know, were here, are here since like 24 years now. Right. So we would like to know how was the immigration process back then and how has it changed uh, in so many years under different governments and all? Oh, back in those days, uh, I came here on a H-4 visa as a dependent. Mm -hmm. My wife uh, came here on H1, so I am on H4 at that point of time. And it took about one and a half year for us once we started the process to get the green card in those back in those mm -hmm. days. It was, uh, we used to think, oh yeah, it's taking a longer time, that is one and a half year. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays for the people yes. that are getting the green card, it is taking about 10 plus years for them to get the green card. Exactly. That's a time that is taking And then it's up. all about dates, getting current that and they're just waiting. Yeah, and waiting and waiting and waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I heard that uh, some of the old people back in 70s and 80s, the employer will just catch the hand of the employee and takes him to the immigration office and tells the immigration officer, I want green card for this guy. And they used to get the green card in those days. I wish those days come back. <laughs> uh, well, well, all Indians to, would I, wish I that. I want to tell you <laughs> something more interesting mm -hmm. right now, or let's say not so uh, distasteful for you, mm -hmm. is for those people who are filing the green card right now under the mm -hmm. employment-based category EB2, mm -hmm. it's going to take 80 years for them to get the green card. Employment-based category? That is right. EB2 category will take 80 Why years. Why so long? 80 years is like a lifetime. Well, for a lot of people, uh, <laughs> if they wait, they will get it. Uh, if they die, well, uh, obviously uh, Next that's Next word, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Why? 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 The reason is that, that employment based is restricted to 140,000 green cards every year. Out of the total 1 million green card, only 14% is reserved for the employment based green card. Mm -hmm. And in that particular category of the green card process of the employment, there is a restriction that no country can get more than 7% when the 140,000 is getting filled out. Mm -hmm. So 7% of 140,000 is approximately around 10,000 green cards every year will oh. go to Indians. Got it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the H-1B, there is no reservation that a single country can get only 7%. It's open. Anybody who's eligible will get the H-1B. Mm -hmm. So there are total 65,000 regular quota, there is 20,000 master's quota, and there are some exempt employees uh, that don't count. So total about 100,000 H-1Bs are mm -hmm. granted every year. Mm -hmm. Out of that, about 60% goes to Indians. Mm -hmm. So that's 60,000, is right? So 60,000 people will should have taken six years to get the green card for each year. I mean, each mm -hmm. year 60,000. But that doesn't work that way. When it comes to the employment green cards, the wife and the husband both are counted. In other words, when I got the green card, I got the green card through my wife because her employer applied, both wife and husband has been counted towards the 140 or 10,000 to the Indians. So practically towards only 5,000 families every year from India are getting the green card right now. If there are 60,000 H-1Bs coming into this country from India every year, which is the statistics according to the government, only 5,000 are getting, it is going to take 12 years. That means that 12 years, 12 years, every, every time you do that, and then minus a lot of people are going to die, when it goes to about 60, 70 years, a lot of people are going to die. That's the reason we came up with a figure of 80 years. Oh, assume that, every assume, year assuming that medical improvements and all those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, but yeah, every year uh, again, 60,000 will add up. That's but right. the, from the prior year, they are not yet settled numbers. Right. So we have a huge queue, which might just keep on growing. Right. Well, this is actually quite an issue with all of us already. Right. But uh, how I'll do you I'll expect? Tell, I'll tell you, in 2007, the priority date was current. That means that it was 2007. Within that year itself, right, things it were taken care of. Yes. Mm -hmm. In 2017, we are like 10 years afterwards, the priority date is 2008. Gosh, it's so, so slow. So in 10 years, yes. it's moved only one year. If based on that, it's going to go 100 plus years, because expecting that some other people are going to die, we came up with a figure of 82 years. So under Obama's administration, mm -hmm. did something happen to this process in terms of allowing more than 5,000 families no. green card? Nothing so it has been same ever since? It's been same from 1990. Okay. Even though they know that right it's a now. huge backlog. Right. 
And, uh, there were attempts made in the Bush administration to change the process to allow more people to get the green card. Uh, the Senate did not pass at that point of time any bill to allow more green cards to get the, for the employment based green cards. In the Obama administration, the Senate passed the bill, but it was blocked by the House, which is the House of the Congress that blocked it out. So in the Obama administration, they couldn't pass it. Uh, now it doesn't look like, like they're going to look anyway pass. with the Trump administration. Uh, so <coughs> it, it is misery so for the people. Exactly. To so go we have a lot of people who are legally working here That's on all right. the nice jobs. They're really mm -hmm. putting hard work in all their jobs, and then they're just waiting, and they might just have to wait for a long time. Right. So are there any lobbying or anything being done to resolve this issue? The, at the time of Bush, admi Bush administration and also Obama administration, a lot of lobbying has been done towards it. And the um, lobbying is Indians done by the, well, particularly Microsoft, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Google, yes. Apple, all, uh, Oracle, all these companies did, uh, they did present themselves and saying that this is wrong way of doing the business mm -hmm. for us. We need talented people to be allowed to come into this country and stay in this Correct. country. Uh, but the Congress is dead from past 15 years. They're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And now we have a Congress and the administration which is completely anti-immigrant. So this is a painful process to get green card from mm -hmm. H1. We would like to know how is the process of getting H1? How long it takes? You're asking me back 22 years ago or, or both comparison? Both comparison. <laughs> 22 years ago, the way the H-1B was filed uh, was, um, it was the filing fees was $85 for filing a H-1B 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And there was no lottery system in those days. And you file a H-1B application, you get the approval, you come into this country. It was very easy. Back in those days, we used to think it was hard uh, because we were looking into the previous 10 years, now now at this point of time, for a person to get a H-1B, it takes minimum of six months and a maximum of 18 months to get a H-1B. Once the application is being filed. Once, the, once you <coughs> decide to get an employee, mm -hmm. you have to make an application. You cannot file an application if the person is not already on H-1B until April 1st. Correct. And then there's you a You cannot file an application on March 31st, and you cannot file an application mm -hmm. on April 10th. You have to file only in that one particular right. week, the application. Mm -hmm. That's and true. that the start date is October 1st. Mm -hmm. So it takes about six months to get it. Yes. And if by any chance you decide to hire a person on April 10th or April 15th. You'll have to wait another whole 18 months. months. Because until mm -hmm. April is one year and yeah. six months, 18 months. And that too, out of every four applications, mm -hmm. only one gets selected in the lottery. But if it's a master uh, quota, then your chance of getting is one out of, one out of every two. Okay. So how many um, visas are granted in lottery system and uh, what uh, is the mas master quota? In the H-1B process at this point of time, 65,000 H-1Bs are granted. Okay. The lottery normally you get about uh, uh, almost like about 200,000 applications for 65,000. And plus you have this master's quota, which if a person has a master's degree in the United mm -hmm. States from an accredited school, mm -hmm. and it's a non-profit organization, then you will be eligible under the master's quota. There are 20,000 master's quota H-1B visas. Last year, uh, it was about every two applications, only one application got selected. That's it? That's it. So it's up to them to select just one out of no, that huge number? No, out of every two applications, one got selected oh, in the lottery. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so any uh, plans of this number getting increased, decreased, getting impacted under? Um, uh, definitely there is no uh, plan at this point of time to increase the numbers with this new Good. administration. A uh, lot more restrictions are about to come on this one. Uh, as we have seen, uh, Trump is an anti, you know, he's going on anti-immigration policies, particularly on, on, on illegal people, but also on legal immigration, it's going to be impacted. Uh, so okay. we have to see how it works out. So how would this uh, overall impact the extension program that we have in place? The uh, H-1B extension. Mm -hmm. Normally H-1B is given for three years, sometimes they only get for one year, depending mm -hmm. on the job conditions. 
you have to file an application every time when your H-1B is getting over. You, you file an application. Every time you file an application, you have to show that the position requires bachelor's degree amendment requirement. You have a proper job. You're getting paid. You are in legal status. You have the W-2 forms, uh, which you're getting paid the normal wage. And then you file an application with immigration. You get it extended up to three years, but they might shorten it up to one year depending on the job. Though. That's the extension process that's there. Now, the good part in the extension process is they don't come under the lottery system that we were discussing. Okay, but they can choose to either provide extension for one year. Yeah, it's one year, two years, or three years. It depends on the job conditions. And that's very frustrating to a lot of people is that every one year they have to go and extend the H-1B and then they have to do the premium processing. Yeah, I was explaining before the filing fees back in old days was $85. Now the filing fees in some of the H-1B cases, $7,500 for a H-1B filing fees. Mm -hmm. So every and in the extension also the filing fees goes up to about four thousand to five thousand dollars for the extension. So every time you go to the immigration, you're paying all this money to the government. Right. Sometimes uh, the company who's hiring you might share the cost. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. But yes, this is whatever six months to eighteen months of filing. But finding an employer itself is a challenge right. once you are a student over here right. and you have done your master's course and mm -hmm. uh, even uh, the charges for, for all those are pretty hefty mm -hmm. unless you have your scholarships going on. Right. So uh, would you like to talk about the OPT time that they have and how stressful is that and uh, on the students to yeah, get it's, it's, it's even very stressful. apply? Yeah, it's very stressful for them and at the same time some of these students because of the stress that they have to get into the lottery system they are trying into finding multiple different employers to file a H-1B. And that's one thing is a big problem when you uh, file with multiple employers. You don't have a job and you're filing with multiple different employers. That is completely illegal. And uh, a lot of employers get into trouble. A lot of employees get into trouble. Even if the H-1B is approved right now, they might come back and they might revoke the H-1B at a later date. I would not suggest that they do that. Uh, no. They should it's only file one job where they are working at, and with that H one B. Don't try to circumvent the. Don't try to circumvent the lottery process. You will be in trouble. And if you are paying money to any employer whom you are not working uh, to file a H one B, you need to understand one thing. If the guy is telling you that he is doing a fraud with immigration. He mm. might as well do fraud with you too. That's so don't trust that guy point. doing it. Uh, don't don't pay any money to get the H-1B because that's mm. illegal. So true. But yes, yeah, sometimes uh, people are so impatient to try to find they a job. They this, don't know yeah. which company's lawyer is really trying hard enough for mm. them to be, get settled in America right. and uh, all that. And that stress can sometimes mm. make them do uh, such stuff. But uh, as you said, uh, double filing should uh, just be not avoided. be done, completely avoided. But uh, uh, but also depends upon the assurance given by the company. And uh, so what should be done? So let's say they apply via one company. Let's say it doesn't work out for some reason or the other. Then the they should next year try with some other company or maybe down the line. I they mean, might if have the lottery to is get not the picked up and there's nothing your employer can do it because he filed an application, the lottery is not picked up. There's nothing wrong with the employer. I mean, you just have to continue working for him if your employment authorization permits. If not, you have to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So how does the transfer, H-1B transfer? Uh, From one company to another mm -hmm. company. How does that work and how would that, would that be impacted and, um, yeah, in uh, current uh, situation? As you know uh, uh, that uh, there is a recent regulation that came out that mm -hmm. if the I-140 is approved in, mm -hmm. the, in the immigration process as we were discussing before, mm -hmm. If a person transfers from company A to company B, uh, they will be allowed to use the I-140 that was approved for the previous company mm -hmm. to extend and, and continue on that. So transfer process from one company to another company is very similar to getting a new H-1B except that they are not subject to the lottery. Mm -hmm. But the new regulations that came out uh, in, uh, in, in December allows them to port the date from the previous company to this one. So they can still use their filing date. That's originally. right. That mm -hmm. is right. That's mm -hmm. a good thing that Obama administration do right before he's going. Mm -hmm. It came on January 17th, actually. Okay. So uh, you are allowed to port the date from one company to another company. And if by any chance you fall out of status for about 60 days, they allow you grace period to be to be not having a job, not having a company for 60 days to stay in this country. So those are 
two That's good things. That's pretty really important thing right. that he did just before he was <laughs> January seventeenth this year. Then January twentieth <laughs> is Obama administration is out. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely crucial information that you just shared. Thank you so much, uh, friends. Uh, we shall continue talking uh, to Mr. Rahul Reddy after a short break. Thank you.